What are your thoughts on this? Is it time to change the legislation or not? Well, part of the problem is almost nobody who talks about it knows what they're talking about. Um, I do. Uh, I spent some years researching and writing a book on the subject, uh, which nobody except me has read. Uh, I can give you the benefit of it if you like. I'll, I'll read it. Uh, we it's, would. It's, it's almost impossible. People are always saying they want to debate about drugs. What they actually mean is they want a series of monologues about how wonderful they are and how they should be legalized and decriminalized. And the people who say differently are almost entirely excluded from the What debate. about medicalized? Brought into the you medical. said, well, uh, medicalized is, a, is another way of saying decriminalized. And dr drug, to, to say that drug taking is a disease is to insult the ill. Uh, people would love well, they to they become be ill when they're addicted uh, don't no, they? people would love to be able to give up cancer uh, if they if they would so, so if you give up cancer it becomes down they they really 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 it's a mental pleased. illness and addiction. you cannot give up you cannot you cannot give up cancer you can give up drugs and people do it all the time so it's completely wrong to make that parallel an illness you, then maybe you, you, like you, alcoholism you, it's an illness that aside. Well, alcohol <laughs> If, if alcohol were, were now at the level of legality and use that, say, marijuana is in this country, would anybody be fool enough to legalise it? Well, it pretty much is a similar level, it, isn't it? But, they, but we have, so it's not in any way an argument for having any more legalised poisons in society. But I've heard you argue that it, uh, cannabis pretty much either. is. I've seen you argue that cannabis that is pretty much legalised because it's not enforced, and that's been going on for 30 years. So in a way... Longer than 30 years. Well, so in a way, it's the same as alcohol. It's been normalised, hasn't it? It's well, no, it hasn't all... actually. It, it hasn't actually been legalised. It's, the, it's a crucial difference. Legalisation, would... if you look, but it's not enforced. So pretty much. Proposition sixty four in California, which is the great model mm -hmm. for legalisation. One of the things which it contains is a provision for advertising. What do you get with legalisation, which you don't get with decriminalisation? And the reason why there is, is a huge billionaire campaign behind it is the ability to sell commercially, to sell in shops on the high street, to sell on the internet, uh, and to advertise uh, as, as cigarettes were 50 years ago. Yeah. Basically, we would be repeating the mistake. Well, we wouldn't do that, would we? Because we've banned mm -hmm. we've banned cigarette advertising. We yeah. Well, no, that's, not, that's by no means sure, because Proposition 64 pretty much allows uh, the, the sale and advertising of marijuana. In America? Just yes, hang on, hang on, not that's, that's, that's just, the California hang on, law. Just a minute, just a minute. What is the problem? Um, because I'm not going to be taking drugs, Peter, and I imagine you're not. Um, what is the problem with decriminalizing, legalizing, whatever? I'm not, I don't want to argue about the, the differences, but what is the, the problem of doing that? Because if we take it away from the criminal element, and the people who are using anyway would who who want to get off it who uh, who are addicted who would do anything to get off it will be able to get help more easily yeah. and those people who believe that smoking the odd spliff or whatever is helping their rheumatism or helping some sort of aches and pains which a number of medical people say it does will be able to get it without actually going to some criminal element on the street well forms of uh, of marijuana is, is crucial uh, is crucial ingredient is tetrahydrocannabinol uh, have been available on NHS prescription for some years. Uh, they're not actually particularly popular because they're not terribly effective. But that's another issue if you want to discuss. You can get it. herbal. You, uh, you can get actual you herbal another, cannabis now. On the end. need another half hour. But the point about if you if you if you decriminalise or legalise, you remove the criminal gangs is proven to be false in both uh, Colorado and in Canada, two particular examples. So you find it elsewhere. What's happened is, of course, one of the things with legalized drugs is that they're immediately taxed. Uh, also, there are sometimes attempts to control the strength, which the legalizers always claim will be what happens if they're legalized. What then happens, of course, is that the, the, the illegal gangs continue to sell undercutting because they're not paying the tax, and they continue to sell at the mm. high strength, which the consumers want. So in both those well, People grow it themselves, it, don't it, they? No, it, yeah. I have to finish this because yeah. it's so vital. What you're, the, the suggestion that, that legalising gets rid of the criminal gangs has been proved to be garbage. That just doesn't make sense. It's actually no, the case. Right. No, no, okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take your point, Peter. continue to flourish since legalisation. Right. I will take, I take your point. I want to go and talk now to Crispin Blunt. Thank you for the moment. We'll come back to you in a minute, Peter. Uh, Crispin Blunt, Conservative uh, Drug Policy Reform Group. Chris, good evening to you. Uh, you've evening. heard what Peter Hitchens has said. What are your thoughts? Well, we've got to unpack the drug policy debate because it is, uh, it's so varied. Uh, on uh, the one hand, it has been a 
catastrophe for the justice system, the weight it has to bear of uh, dealing with uh, drug users and uh, drug suppliers uh, in the criminal justice system, uh, as I saw when I was the uh, prisons minister for two and a half years. And it was uh, during that time um, that I came to the conclusion that whatever we were doing it was wrong because it was it, uh, it was absolutely catastrophic the overall um, impact in the United Kingdom on society and the cost and the human waste um, and we are handing a, um, a a business for which there is a significant demand which it doesn't look however severe your punishments are uh, is significantly affected mm. now I guess APT is going to come back and talk about Japan and China and Singapore um, uh, but the the effect of uh, very severe enforcement is actually to drive people, uh, as they did in the United States with prohibition, um, to use uh, stronger drugs. Um, mm. Now, if you look at the, uh, the the first thing I think we should be focusing on is the opportunities we have forgone for medicine over the last 50 years um, since uh, cannabis uh, and the psychedelic drugs. Um, were put in a category even more serious than heroin. Um, they went into Schedule 1 because we decided, not on the basis of any evidence, on the basis of some instinct, that these particular classes of drugs were not going to have any uh, medical benefit. Fifty years later, uh, we're now uh, beginning to discover, uh, as we knew in the 1960s, that the psychedelic classes of drugs uh, were showing incredibly promising uh, mental health treatment that in conjunction with psychotherapy and microdosing of psychedelics, mm. you could um, begin to address some of the people with the greatest trauma. Um, for example, our veterans who've come back from Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, um, there are 7,500 of them who are suffering from mm. PTSD. 2,500 of them are beyond treatment with our current mental health uh, capacity. We are actually on the verge of, I believe, a great leap forward in mental health treatment. And we, because of our drugs laws, uh, handicapped ourselves by five decades yeah. um, in getting the science and the research done. Yeah. Um, simply, Which is going um, on now, isn't it? That, that's going on right now. But the fact well, is, I, I mean... That's, the case, uh, and I, when I started, looked at the case about two years ago, it probably was stupid, about five minutes since now. You slam dunk, it's all Earth's stuff is doing in uh, Section 1 anyway. Um, as long as you've never killed anybody in, in any events, which um, obviously puts in a totally different place from uh, alcohol and tobacco, yeah. um, who have killed a, a great number of people. But Peter um, Hitchens is saying that the, the, the medical cannabis is available for anybody who wants it, but it doesn't really work. Well, it does cost ten thousand pounds a year, which is actually, and it's, part, it's all part of the messed up regulatory structure we have, uh, which is not supporting access to uh, medicines in a safe and responsible way. And the NHS, the, and the doctors aren't taught properly about this. It's not in their pharmacopoeia. Um, the trusts are very nervous about the reaction of the newspapers, and so there's not exactly um, a swinging encouragement. Um, to prescribe it if you go to your GP. Indeed, you need to be a specialist doctor in order to be able to And it does cost it. children their lives. I mean, I've seen a surgeon saying that if these kids who can have epileptic fits and adults, if they don't get this oil, they can have hundreds of seizures, and one of those yes, seizures can end and, up in them and, dying. And, and that's true. And it was the two epileptic, the story of two epileptic boys that pushed uh, the government over the line in uh, June 2018 um, uh, when uh, Charlotte Caldwell uh, had run out of medicine um, uh, and was prescribed some more in Canada, went to Canada, collected it, brought it back to Heathrow, mm. um, and had it confiscated at customs on the Monday, yeah. and by Thursday her son was in hospital fitting. And understandably, her, her consultant was um, out in front of the hospital saying, well, I don't really care about this. It's just unbelievably cruel to take a medicine off a child who's working. Mm. Yeah. Um, and on Saturday, uh, Sandy Jarrett, the then Home Secretary, uh, uh, gave a licence to give it back. Good. Um, Quite, and, and still it difficult. Story, and it should, yeah, but, but the it, other, the you other know, family would do You shouldn't have to right. do that. Peter, you heard what Crispin had to say. Um, what is your response to that? Well, there was a lot of emotionalism in it, and not very much uh, scientific fact. Uh, the, the inventor of the medical marijuana campaign, a man called Keith Stroop, admitted in an interview with an American university newspaper, the Emory Wheel, back in 1979. <laughs> that it was uh, it was basically a, a ruse to get um, a red herring, as you put it, to get part a good name. And it always has- You're going to need to tell that to MS people, Peter. I'm sorry? You're going to need to tell that to people with MS who grow their own medicine. I'll tell it to anybody uh, at all, because here's your problem with, um, I didn't interrupt you, by the way, um, but here's your problem with medical marijuana. 
I mean, the difficulty with it is, is that I, I, those of us with long memories will will recall the, the terrible case of thalidomide, a miracle drug for mothers suffering from the very, very distressing complaint of morning sickness during pregnancy. It was very effective. And it was also extremely effectively marketed by slick marketers, as I recall. But alas, although it was extremely effective at dealing with morning sickness, it had terrible, terrible side effects, which is why it isn't used for that purpose anymore. Uh, the problem with drugs is they have to be tested. Uh, they have to be really, really tested before they can be used to make sure that they don't do more damage than they do good. And the difficulty with marijuana is that it is in, its use is increasingly correlated with severe, incurable mental illness. And it would seem to me that any drug which had that as a side effect uh, was pretty much ruled out as a medical treatment. And if we're going to have an argument along these lines, then there's an enormous amount. Uh, that doesn't Sir Robin bear Murray, out any evidence, does it? Professor Sir Robin Murray of the Maudsley Hospital in London has pretty much come to the point where he says the correlation is so strong now that it's impossible to ignore. And there isn't just a correlation between the marijuana yes, use. But... There isn't just a, everyone wants to interrupt me now. There isn't just a correlation <laughs> between mar marijuana use and, and mental illness. There's a correlation between marijuana use and serious violent crime, uh, which is increasingly observable. And anybody who doubts this only needs to use their computer uh, to go to a website called Attack of Smoke Cannabis, uh, where a friend of mine compiles daily uh, from local newspaper reports all over the British Isles accounts of horrible violent crimes committed by people who have been using marijuana. And these I think are you'll find th that is not, is, uh, these are the, I'm, if, I'm if not, going, no, I'm not going, interrupting. Going, I'm not go. interrupting Peter. Here we go. But as a, anybody, as a, actually, no, anybody no, 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 Peter. Actually, anybody who as actually a, states Peter. any case against this extraordinary dangerous drug. As a debate I'm I'm three to, three to, you I'm three, to, I'm three to one already on this program. And here I am, no, and you're all, no. you're all piling in. I'm not, I'm not. Finish what I'm yes, saying, sir, shut you up. don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. Peter, it as, as it is my it is program, me. Peter. Why that is, I can't tell you. But here it is. This is a serious Peter. argument against marijuana legalization. Something which Peter, if we, do, we will regret. If you carry on like this, I just don't. have to curtail it because this is supposed to be a debate. And you're supposed to listen to the other side and then come back. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I listened. I listened in silence uh, to to Mr. Blunt so did I. And, and I listened in silence to you at the beginning. Irresponsible misrepresentation of the of the situation. And I, that's my job in a debate. I, the moment I start saying anything. No, but just because they all used um, cannabis doesn't mean there was a link between them. Okay, right. I tell, tell you what. I tell you. Listen, listen. Can we get back to the evidence and the science. No, no. I'm sorry. We can't. I'm finishing this. I've had enough of it. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm sorry, uh, Crispin. But if we're not going to have a proper debate, and if the two of you are just going to argue and shout, I'm going back to doing my own show. Thank you very much indeed. Because it really, I'm not having that. I'm not going to be spoken to by people like that as well. I wanted to ask sensible, serious questions uh, to you, Peter. But all you want to do is shout. Because we need to interrupt some and of I'm your points, just your little points, just uh, like, like where you said there was a link. There's no necessarily a link between cannabis use and those people that committed the crimes. Ash, what are you talking about? Well, what Peter was saying. I've stopped the debate now because, all right, you know, no, no, what is the point of doing it if, yeah. if people... Listen, I, I've got no love of drugs at all. And I think uh, people with drugs, I'm, I'm a bit like Peter Hitchens, I have to be honest with you. You know, if, you, if you're stupid enough to get yourself addicted yeah. to it, you get everything you deserve. But quite frankly, I would like to get rid of the gangs who go around killing each other uh, because they're selling drugs to people and more and more kids on the street. What was it? March, month of March in London alone, in London alone, something like 450 kids were stabbed. Not all killed, I'll give you that, but there were stabbings about 450 in London alone. In other cities, there were a, a number as well. I would like to try and get to the bottom of how we can stop that. Um, we, I've, you still know, if you want to take drugs, if you want to sniff a bit of coke, you're an idiot, you're a fool, you're stupid. Okay? If you want to smoke back. the occasional spliff, then yeah. you're, you're an idiot as well. But we have to discuss it. I see yeah. you're back. Let's talk about it then more Peter. sensibly because yeah. I want to ask the questions. Nobody seems to be answering them as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Why on earth can't we have some scientific proof, one way or the other, brought to the government, and then we can make decisions that we can't make just when we're having arguments? Peter. Um, James, and that's precisely what, what? we should be Oh, sorry, doing. okay, Crispin, you go first. Thank you, Roger. We should be proceeding on the basis of the available evidence. 
and uh, in the UK, because cannabis is uh, supplied largely by organised crime, it's grown in uh, places often uh, supervised by uh, refugees being brought here um, uh, uh, for, the, for the purpose, and it's made super strong. And 95% of the cannabis sold in the UK is skunk. It's very, very heavy in THC. And it has, in developing young male minds in particular, the, um, a, the association that Peter was saying with um, uh, psychosis and, uh, and mental illness. So and, you agree with Peter? Yeah. Well, yes, I mean, drugs are always uh, dangerous. They, they well, can I just make I mean, this we point? When it was, when it was decriminalised... But, but, but uh, very, very strong cannabis criminally yeah. supplied um uh and particularly to uh, young males is uh makes them prone uh more prone to psychosis yeah. um than they would otherwise be yes there is an association there go to the united states and talk to people about psychosis in the young and they look at you blankly um because their supply chain is different the cannabis isn't as strong um that is, that is uh sold to them uh in the united states because the supply chain is much more distributed but when um, it was decriminal like crispin organized crime as as it is here when it was However, decri- can you, can you, when it was decriminalised in this in the UK, use amongst sixteen to twenty four year olds dropped because it wasn't seen as cool anymore. Well, let's. Um, uh, what we want to try and do is reduce crime. We want to uh, protect our children, and in all of this, we want, you know, the object has got to be to increase the benefit to society by making use of the medicines that ought to be available to us if we had allowed the research to happen. Why not? Um, uh, putting these these uh, drugs in a category which had no evidential base uh, whatsoever, and so we're now right. way behind the eight on mental health treatments and other things. And you want to protect people um, as far as possible and give them information um, right. about Crispin. what they might be doing to themselves. One more question for you, and then I want to go back to Peter. What what do you think about the fact that this country? grows more medical cannabis than many other countries in the world. I think I think we are one of one, the main no, growers no, no, no. and suppliers. Well, um, uh, GW Pharma were given a couple of licenses back in 99 by Paul Basing when he was the uh, responsible minister, and they've turned them into FDA-approved um, uh, 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 leading uh, treatments. They've invested a billion pounds in uh, uh, bringing those uh, pro- products to, to market. Um, the thing is, I find very distressing is that we grow opium and we grow opium for the morphine uh, market, the medical morphine market. And we ended up fighting a war in Helmand province mm. um, uh, because we didn't let the tribesmen there um, grow uh, opium poppy yeah. there mm. for the legal morphine medical market. Mm. Um, because we were growing it here or the Indians were growing it, but they didn't have uh, the quota. And okay. we got run out of Helmand uh, by the Taliban as a consequence. There are all sorts of hideous consequences of our drugs policies. Um, at Mexico, 30,000 people a year die in Mexico, which yeah. is the route into the United States, and the cartels fight over ownership of the supply chain into the United States. And wholly innocent people are killed in very large numbers in Mexico uh, as a consequence. That is why former Mexican presidents are on the Global Commission right. uh, for Drug Policy Reform. Final question. And a- how often. Crispin, I'm running out of time. Final question, quick answer, please. Do you think there is any chance this government will change uh, policy on drugs? Um, uh, I would anticipate this government will change policy um, in uh, in several stages. Uh, carefully, uh, evidence considered. There's about to get a report from uh, Dan Carroll Black, who's... Okay, the so that's a yes, Crispin, basically. Yeah. yeah. That's a yes. Sorry to, to, to cut you short, Crispin, but I, I'm going to run out of time for the news. Peter, your response to what has been said. First of all, medical cannabis, the fact we grow it, Peter, what do you think about that? Well, as I say, the, the Home Office has been very generous with, uh, with, with allowing licenses for the growing, of, the legal growing of marijuana. There's a huge legal marijuana farm in Kent. Uh, and the, there have been many at, attempts to establish the medical use of marijuana. I'm not going to argue that it's got no use at all. The point that I've made is that the side effects seem to me to make it very unlikely it could ever be licensed as a drug until they can find a way of eliminating that. But it's a, it's a side issue from the point. It's, it's always been a red herring to get caught a good name. The real issue is, do you want to legalize um, in a, a very dangerous poison, which is strongly correlated with lifetime mental illness, uh, the ruin of the families which that affects which is terrible and i've seen many cases of it and people write to me about it all the time and, and also is increasingly associated and i read the website attack of smoke cannabis you don't the, the correlation that is growing between the use of marijuana 
and violent crime. And indeed, it's also, also be found in many of these cases of terrorism, uh, both in this country, the Lee Rigby case, for instance, and on the continent, the, the Charlie Hebdo case and the Bataclan mm -hmm. case and the Talis train case. Over and over again, you will find uh, that the person involved in these acts of insane violence is, in fact, a long-term marijuana user. Why we would want, why any responsible person would want until we know for sure that this is that this this is not a genuine this is not a genuine causal relationship. Why anyone would want to take the risk of legalizing a drug of this kind, I really do not know. I can't imagine any responsible person wishing to do it. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much indeed for your time. Crispin, thank you very much indeed for your time. I'm afraid we have uh, no more time to talk about that. Whether the government will uh, change the legislation on drugs, whether we will get uh, decriminalization or even legalization. I don't know. But what do you think about it? What would you like to see? Uh, give us a call, 0344 499 1000.